you can tell a lot by the color of your weld. The range of colors that occur in welds can shock the senses and stir your imagination. Sometimes these hues are desirable and sometimes they are not. How they appear and why they matter depend on the process, material, industry, and applications. When steel heats up, its entire atomic structure changes. And as the surface of the heated steel meets the atmosphere, it interacts with the elements in the air, creating a chemical reaction. The colors that result depend on the makeup of the metal, the composition of the atmosphere, the temperature at which they meet and the duration of time the metal is exposed at the elevated temperature. The metal is oxidizing, that's why the metal color is changing. Surface oxidation is one thing, but deeper oxidation, below the face of the metal, causes porosity. This is where shielding gas or flux comes in, as both are designed to protect the hot welded area from the atmosphere until the bead or heat affected zone cools to the point where the steel or atmosphere mash up will not hurt the steel's final properties. When somebody tells you that your weld is colored a certain way because you're welding at a certain temperature, they're only partially right. A lot of factors go into it. Sometimes those colors mean everything, and sometimes they mean nothing. On stainless steel for example, any color in the weld or heat affected zone shows that an oxide layer has formed, which can affect corrosion resistance. The darker the color is, the thicker the oxidization. The colors follow a predictable pattern, from chrome to straw to gold to blue to purple. In some industries, like pharmaceuticals, any color beyond chrome in the weld is unacceptable, but in other sanitary welding situations such as dairy shades up through light blues are allowed. Those colors can be cleaned off mechanically or chemically, and the corrosion resistance can be restored. On stainless steel for example, any color in the weld or heat affected zone shows that an oxide layer has formed, which can affect corrosion resistance. The darker the color is, the thicker the oxidization. The colors follow a predictable pattern, from chrome to straw to gold to blue to purple. In some industries, like pharmaceuticals, any color beyond chrome in the weld is unacceptable, but in other sanitary welding situations such as dairy shades up through light blues are allowed. Those colors can be cleaned off mechanically or chemically, and the corrosion resistance can be restored. The following stainless steel and titanium heat tint charts are good reference guides for acceptable and non-acceptable weld oxidation. A low level of oxygen before, during and after welding is necessary, in order to achieve a minimum oxidation and discoloration. These valuable guides for all stainless steel and titanium welders and weld inspectors will help to achieve the highest quality and most metallurgically sound weld joints. Arc length, bead length, temperature of base material, how clean and smooth the surface is, tungsten angle, your motion while welding, the direction you're welding, if there's a back purge or backing plate, and post flow all affect the final color. In conclusion, colors in welds are pretty, and many elements play into their creation. Sometimes they indicate a bad weld, sometimes they don't. <laughs>